Thanks for joining me for another quarantine workflow walkthrough. So like most of you, I'm trapped on my property or nearby my property. So what do we take pictures of? We take pictures of what we have around. In this case, some beautiful spring flowers. And I want to use today's walkthrough to do two things. I want to talk about black and white conversions and some of the ways that we can make black and white conversions in Darktable. And I'm also going to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, the difference between tonal contrast and color contrast. Because if we're making black and white images, we're interested in tonal contrast, and that sometimes can be quite different from color contrast. So I hope you find this useful. The image we're looking at here is a beautiful purple flower against a green background and uh, looking at this image in color it, it has it has a nice contrast uh, a, a pretty good color contrast and uh, one of the reasons that is is that if we if we look at a color wheel we'll see that the blues and purples or the purples and magentas uh, and the greens and yellows are not directly opposite one another on the color wheel but uh, they're they're pretty far separated making them uh, uh, ideally complementary colors and creating a pleasing contrast to, to the human eye. So if you're taking pictures with black and white film you might look at an image like this because it appears to have contrast to you and think uh, that, that it would make a good black and white image. But that's not generally uh, or not necessarily going to be the case. So in this case, uh, tonal values between the flower here and the background are much closer than they might appear. So how can we illustrate that? Well, f let me go into uh, basic adjustments and just simply show you what happens if I remove the saturation from this image. So if I drag my saturation down to zero and take all the color out of the image, Oops. Um, well, now the flowers start to blend in pretty significantly with the background. We do have a little bit of tonal contrast here, but not much. We, we can see that the light areas of the background and the light areas of the flowers and the shadow areas of the flowers and the shadow areas of the background are, are quite close in, in tone. And, and frankly, this doesn't make a very compelling black and white image. It's quite, quite boring. Uh, I could do lots of things to this image. I could go into the tone curve and I certainly could increase the contrast of the image. Um, and, and by doing so, make it, you know, somewhat more interesting. Uh, I could put a little less curve in here to uh, increase the contrast further. And, you know, okay, I've got a better image now. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe you don't agree. But I still don't have really much separation between the, the, the foreground and the background. So, you know, I'm not very satisfied with this. Let's go back and reset all these adjustments. All right, so uh, what happens if I use some of the other tools in Darktable? I'm going to go ahead into the color area and use the monochrome module. So the monochrome module lets me apply what you would consider various color filters to, to the image. So uh, first, if I just convert it to monochrome, I get a very similar look to what happened when I was desaturated. If I start to move uh, towards the reds, that's going to be lightening the reds, but in this image there really aren't any reds, so the image doesn't change very much. If I come down towards the blues, uh, then we see that that shift there. If I move over here towards the magentas and the purples, and if I move towards the greens. Um, but none of these is really having much effect of, of, of changing the separation between the foreground and the background. If I tighten up the area here a little bit, I can get a little bit more contrast between them by clicking in some of these areas. There, if I lighten my greens, you see it's it's uh, started to lighten the background relative to the foreground, and I'm getting a little bit of separation. But frankly, it's not what I want. The eye is drawn to light parts of the image, and in this case, I've made the flowers dark, and that's not really uh, very attractive. If I come over here and try to make the flowers lighter then they start to blend in with the background again. So, you know, once again, uh, I'm not really getting what I want out of, out of the monochrome module. So this is a situation where uh, I would turn to the channel mixer. 
right? So the channel mixer is going to allow me to adjust each of my individual channels, red, green, and blue, independently. And if I come in here and I select the gray output, so I'm going to adjust the amounts of red, green, and blue that show up in gray, then this is a similar to applying red, green, and blue filters in, in black and white film. And this, this module has a bunch of presets. So I could take a look at what this would look like if I had shot it with a green filter. Uh, it lightens the greens, but it's also lightening the foliage. doesn't really help me very much. What happens if I would have shot it with an orange filter? Uh, again, I don't have very much tonal contrast. Oops, if I check out what it looked like with a red filter, again, not very much. None of these standard filters is really going to going to help me very much in, in this situation. So, but what I know, right, is that is that the purples in the flowers are made up of, of blues and reds, and the background is mostly made up of greens. So if I start off with, with my uh, red filter setting here, and I just back off on the greens to darken them, now the image overall is too dark. So let's start pulling up blues and see what happens. Now I'm starting to get a nice bright flower image and a darker background image. And I have a lot of separation between my foreground and my background. I can play with these and get it to where I want it. But looking at my histogram up here, uh, I'm going to make sure that I haven't pushed any of my shadows into black black and then I'll just work on my uh, bringing up my blues and my reds until uh, my whites start to get to where I want them to be and I'm gonna say that's that's pretty good if I turn on my clipping indicators I've got a few shadows that are approaching black that's fine I'm okay with that I don't I'm not clipping off any of my highlights so I could push them up a little bit more if I want to uh, until I start to see some some indicators in the in the highlights pulling up my my red and my blue together so I lighten those purples and I'm I'm gonna stop there. I'm not uh, not interested in in driving it up any any farther than that. I can pull my greens down a little bit now because, again, those greens are, uh, you know, they're they're all they're yellow greens, right? So they've got some uh, some blue in them as as well. Uh, good. So we'll turn off our indicators. All right. So now this image has a lot more pleasing level of contrast to me it still needs uh, some work to give it some punch right because I've I'm really not seeing detail in the flowers and, and separation and I might want to uh, drive my reds down a little bit to lighten up the edges of these petals just a bit so now I'll start making some of my other adjustments I'm, I'm happy with the tonal contrast here I'm not very happy with this part of the image down here where I have this flower in the foreground and this stick. Um, and I think the, the easiest way for me to handle that is going to be to go with a square crop. So uh, I'm going to jump in here to my crop and rotate. Uh, and I have it set at a square. I'm going to move my square over, over this way. Let's see what happens if I push it all the way there. Yeah, let's come back. Let's take a look at that crop that looks pretty good I'm, I'm happy with that I've got the the uh, subject now is nice and large now we'll start working on uh, bringing out the details so first thing I'll do is turn on local contrast uh, it already helped quite a bit I can uh, turn up the details a little bit see what happens now nah, my brights are getting too bright but local contrast does uh, let me say, well, let's not apply it to the highlights as much. Let's bring the local contrast and the highlights down so we can turn it up a little bit without getting our highlights too weird. Better, better, okay. Getting some, some nice definition in the image now. I think I'm going to come in here to the contrast equalizer and push up on the fine details here and see what happens. Good. Now I'm really starting to get some nice uh, crisp 
crisp edges on the petals of this this flower right here was my point of focus this was shot with the uh, 75 to 205 millimeter Vivitar manual focus lens so and I shot this at 205 millimeters which is uh, 400 millimeters on my micro four thirds camera so the depth of field uh, at this distance which was uh, pretty close to the minimum focusing distance the depth of field is probably about uh, the thickness of a penny or less than that so these are very small flowers uh, total height of this thing from top to bottom is is probably about an uh, inch and a half or so so the each of these flowers is, is quite tiny so my my uh, depth of focus here is, is pretty small you can see that this flower is nice and crisp on the edge this one which is a little bit farther forward is already a little bit soft and and this one which is behind it is is quite soft but that's what I was going for so I feel pretty good about this I have nice nice tonal separation and texture in the petals of the flowers I've got very nice separation between the uh, background and the foreground my foreground is bright so uh, it draws the viewers eye and to me uh, this is as compelling of an image of these beautiful flowers as it would be if it was in color now lots of people might disagree I'm a but I'm a big proponent of black and white so there's no surprise there I'm going to go ahead and go back to what it looked like originally and I'm going to take a snapshot and now I'm gonna to go to our final image and I'm going to show you the before and after. So, oops. All right, so here's where we came from. Very nice image with beautiful color. And if you prefer the color image, I certainly wouldn't uh, fault you for that. But uh, I wanted to make a black and white image, and I'm quite happy with, with this one. I think it, uh, it it's impactful. It has strong tonal contrast and uh, every bit as beautiful as the color image. So I hope you appreciated that little walkthrough today and learned a little something about tonal and color contrast and also some of the ways that you can make uh, monochrome conversions, uh, black and white conversions in Darktable. Uh, there are others. There are lots of ways to do almost everything in Darktable, but those are the most common ones. And uh, the the go-to for me is generally the channel mixer. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Please like and share this video if you did. Bye-bye.